Hello and welcome to Iowa News and Views. We're here today at the Iowa State Fair with Iowa News and Views on the road. Thanks for being with us. Um, we have a terrific program this morning. Um, it's August 16th uh, in the middle of the State Fair. We're on the American Heritage uh, stage uh, here, here, here in Des Moines. Uh, we are actually being powered by the Iowa Renewable Energy Association solar uh, display, a thousand watts of, of solar power coming at you. Uh, and we're, we appreciate their, uh, their involvement with this effort. I'd also like to thank Dwayne Johnson from the Energy Bureau for his assistance in, in getting this show set up today. Uh, thank you, Dwayne. Uh, we're here today with the new um, Iowa Lieutenant Governor, Sally Peterson. She's our guest. We're going to be talking to her about how she became involved in uh, state government over the last year or so in the campaign and now serving as our new Lieutenant Governor. Sally, thanks for being with us. Pleasure to be here, Joe. Thank you. Great. Sally, give us a little bit of background about where you grew up and, and where you come from. Well, I'm in Iowa and I was uh, born in Muscatine, Iowa, but I grew up in, in Benton, Iowa, uh, over by Cedar Rapids and Waterloo in Benton County. Uh, I'm, I think probably most people know I'm from a family of Republicans, uh, so when I called my mother and my parents to tell them that uh, I was going to be accepting the Democratic nomination for Lieutenant Governor uh, on Tom Vilsack's ticket. Um, there was some surprise, uh, but I've been a Democrat for about 15 years, and uh, my family, I like to say, was um, among the first Republicans to come on board the Vilsack-Peterson ticket. That's great. We are at the State Fair, and I know there's a lot of exciting things going on. You've got the Governor's Booth and, and the 2010 Strategic Planning Council folks are there. The Department of Transportation also has, apparently, a very nice booth, and uh, they're passing out some really nice stuff. Yeah, I'd like to, uh, to show this. this. These are some wonderful posters that are available free to the public, and this is one of the hottest things uh, at the fair. Um, it, these posters um, sh show the number of uh, wildflowers that have been planted uh, along the highways here in Iowa. And uh, Iowa is really ahead in this program. The Department of Transportation has planted uh, over 25,000 acres in roadside uh, uh, um, space to uh, these wildflowers. And I think people are beginning to notice what beautiful um, beautiful road sites we have. Too bad. It's a terrific, uh, it's a terrific way to plan our roadways, not only for um, the beauty, but habit it creates a lot of wonderful habitat for birds and small critters that uh, uh, make it for a healthier environment. Yeah, exactly. Great. Thanks for bringing those. So check out the DOT. They're not just building roads, they're, they're creating some beauty around the state as well. We like that. And we uh, hope you'll stop by the, the Governor and Lieutenant Governor's uh, booth. Um, there's information there on the diversity uh, conference that's coming up October 5th and 6th. Um, so you can stop by and get information on that. Also, as you mentioned, the Strategic Planning Council. And um, so there's a place to get information uh, on that as well. We're also asking um, people here who are attending the fair to make comments about the state of agriculture here in Iowa. And we'll be uh, distributing their comments uh, to the um, presidential candidates. Very good. It sounds like we're getting some people taking advantage of writing down their thoughts about agriculture this last week. We certainly are. That's a good thing. Um, good way to get some feedback from folks. So you, you grew up in Benton. You've been a Democrat for 15 years. I don't know how actively as a Democrat, but you've also been active in your community in a variety of ways. What are some of the things that, how did you get civically involved? Well, um, I, I think uh, while I was working at Meredith Corporation for Better Homes and Gardens magazine, Meredith was a, is a good corporate citizen and they always encourage their employees uh, to be uh, involved. And so I was involved uh, generally in the arts uh, and served on a number of volunteer boards there. Then after I had a, a, a child um, he, who was di diagnosed with autism, uh, I became very active in education, special education and disability areas. I've also been serving on uh, library boards, uh, hospital boards, that kind of thing. So, Sure. sure. So you've been uh, an active civic person. Um, what motivates you to get involved in, in your community in those in a variety of different organizations? It's not just one issue in particular. Well, I think I'm like most Iowans. Uh, you know, I see, if I see a problem, I feel like I need to be part of the solution. That's probably part of uh, growing up in a small town and feeling very much a part uh, of the community. Uh, my father was mayor um, in the town of Benton and my mother was very active in local uh, organizations 
And I think I was raised with a sense of um, uh, that, that kind of responsibility for becoming involved in your community. So I don't know if the word activist would be too strong a word. I, I don't think it is to kind of describe your involvement in, in your community, particularly in the disability community. Um, you were a mother of, of a child with autism trying to figure out, I assume, what services and what assistance uh, um, was going to be available for your son, Ronald. How, how did you, I mean, what were some of those issues? Well, I think as I began to um, look at how to get better uh, services for my own child, I discovered there were a lot of other children whose um, parents didn't have the ability to be as involved and, and uh, couldn't be active in seeing that their child uh, got good services. And so I really felt the responsibility to be active on their behalf as well. Um, and that led to appointments to uh, task forces and boards. I've uh, served a number of years on the um, state special education advisory board, um, a number of task forces um, that dealt specifically with education issues. And then um, as a board president of Polk County Health Services, and of course that's the, um, the central uh, planning uh, council for persons with disabilities in Polk County, and it operates under a $30 million budget, so it's a rather large uh, agency. So what was the biggest surprise in, though, in, in those advocacy efforts in terms of getting involved in, in, with those organizations? I assume Polk County has a pretty good system of services. Um, I think uh, Polk County's been, uh, been very innovative in, uh, in the programs that they offer and in the way that they're trying to create flexibility so that services are tailored to the individual uh, instead of making the individual fit into specific programs and funding streams. But, uh, there's always a lot of red tape, and it's not easy to change uh, uh, a system. Um, I think a lot of people relate it to turning uh, a, a cruise boat around in, um, in the ocean. It's something that takes a long time to do and um, takes a lot of effort on the behalf of a lot of people. But before I got involved in these uh, issues, there were a lot of parents and activists before me who were involved. And so um, it's a process that we're each trying to make it better for the next uh, the next group that comes along. Very good. Um, so then you began a political career <laughs> sometime last summer, I guess, when well, Governor Vilsack, or then candidate for Governor Vilsack, called you up on the phone and said, Sally, would you consider being running with me as lieutenant governor, or something like that? Well, yes. I mean, the invitation came out of the blue, but I don't want to leave the impression that I haven't been active in politics, sure. because I certainly have, and, and have done a lot of things uh, at the grassroots roots level, um, hosting coffees for candidates and trying to get out the vote for candidates, helping to support candidates. And so I was involved in that way in Tom Vilsack's campaign in the primary. Uh, in, in fact, I was just very taken with him as a candidate. I thought he had a great vision for the state of Iowa. I thought he was a man with a lot of heart and uh, he has a great mind. And so I really wanted to see him become governor of this state. So I was more involved in his campaign than I had been in any other campaign before that. Uh, after the primary, um, he did give me a call and ask me if I'd consider being on a short list. That came as quite a surprise to me because I hadn't considered uh, myself as a political candidate. I'd always been supporting other people in politics. But after I gave it some thought, I felt um, really that what better way is there to have an impact on the public policy issues that I care about than to actually um, be sitting in the seat of lieutenant governor. So I'm very happy that I said yes. and. Uh, and have had a lot of fun up until this time. I bet. Well, as you that. know, there's a lot of places to be active. You've talked about a few of those. Now, as a political figure, a political leader, um, that's an important an important way, too. You, you're involved in a lot of different uh, projects. Well, and I hope that one of the messages that this g gives to others is that you don't need to be uh, raised in uh, the political mainstream in order to be involved. We've certainly tried to recruit a lot of people outside of government and outside of politics to important key positions in our administration and also on our staff. Mm -hmm. Very good. I know one of your interests in addition to this is trying to get more women elected officials at all levels of government. Um, what's your message to either women thinking about that or young women you know, coming up? Well, I want to make that message a little bit uh, stronger. I really uh, feel that one of, um, one of the issues that I'm uh, most interested in is inclusion. And so I want to bring people to the table who haven't been included before to be sure that government uh, hears from all the voices that they need to hear from. 
Uh, so, so women, minorities, people with disabilities, gays and lesbians, people who have been excluded from policy making need to, uh, need, to, need to be invited to the table. And uh, I would encourage people to get involved at whatever level they're comfortable. Um, if a woman isn't particularly interested in running herself or a minority is not interested in running uh, themselves, they can support others um, who are. And, and uh, we need to have more people from diverse uh, backgrounds involved in state government. You mentioned at the top of the show a diversity conference coming up. What, what's happening with that, and what are the dates again? You talked about that. Yes, October 5th and 6th. Uh, the theme this year is Immigration and Iowa, the Faces and Voices of Iowa. And this is the sixth annual Iowa Diversity Conference. It'll be held at the Polk County Convention uh, Complex in Des Moines. And if people are interested in getting more information, uh, they can either write to the Iowa Diversity Conference at the Office of Lieutenant Governor, State Capitol, or um, they can connect us uh, with us on their in, on the internet at www.state.iowa.us slash diversity. That's a lot. We can probably add that as a graphic. Uh, we got a little wind coming up here. We're uh, at the Iowa State Fair today. Uh, Iowa News and Views is on the road, and um, we're visiting with uh, Iowa Lieutenant Governor Sally Peterson. We're pleased to have her here as our guest. Um, back to the content of the show. Sally, you're working on workforce development. And that's clearly a diversity issue, not, not only having enough workers, but as our state grows more diverse, kind of a willingness to, of employers to reach out to diverse folks as in potential employees. Absolutely. You know, Iowa's population isn't growing fast enough to meet the needs of, of our workforce. Uh, in fact, um, there are more people in Iowa over the age 75 than under the age 4. And so uh, you can see we have a lot of people who are moving into retirement age, and at the same time we don't have enough young people um, coming into the workforce. So we need to do a lot of things in order to increase the workforce in Iowa. Um, and this council has been uh, put together in order to address that issue. Very good. I know there's been some meetings that have taken place across the state recently in Cedar Rapids. What kind of things are you hearing from business leaders in Iowa about how to prepare our workforce? Let me give you a little bit of background on the council first, uh, uh, Senator Bolcom. We have uh, representatives from uh, the business community, from labor, uh, from the education community and from the nonprofit sector, uh, all are part of this um, council so that we're getting a wide variety of, uh, of viewpoints. And we uh, divided the task up into four uh, areas of concentration. Um, we're focusing on uh, retention of workers who are currently in the workforce, on recruitment of uh, new workers, on the preparation of our um, workforce as they come through, uh, through the um, education system and uh, then on enhancing the skills of uh, the current workforce. So uh, those are the four areas that we've been addressing. The council has, has uh, done their work. Then we've had three uh, forums around the state, and the one you, most, you uh, mentioned most recently was in Cedar Rapids last week. The council will be meeting again now to finalize our recommendations, and we'll be coming out with a report on September 21st. So in turn, how, have we been getting pretty good attendance at those, and are people fe feeling free to speak of their mind on these questions? Yes, I, we've been delighted with uh, the attendance and with the broad range of comments that we've heard from, uh, from the public on this, and we're incorporating many of their suggestions uh, into the report uh, of the council. Very good. There's another effort going on, the governor's strategic planning effort for 2010, a group of people, about 40-some people, and, and they're prepared now to go out throughout the state and ask Iowans about their vision for our future. Right, and we're, we're going to be dovetailing some of the work of the, uh, of the Workforce Council into that uh, strategic uh, planning committee. Uh, the Workforce Council is trying to focus on short-term things, action plans that we can take, actions we can take right now in order to uh, increase our workforce. The, the uh, Strategic Planning Council is a more long-range vision for the state, so we're passing along those things that we think uh, are uh, more long-term thinking to that council. I see. I know there, last legislative session there were some efforts on workforce development, specifically worker retraining. There was some legislation I think we're going to continue to work on this next year on, on that question. Yeah, absolutely. And I think one of the things that we uh, passed in the last legislative uh, session was additional funding for um, 
Work Keys, which is an assessment tool that can be used in the schools to help students understand um, what their own skills are uh, in relationship to the, the jobs that are out there and help them decide how to plan their careers and how to plan further education or training. Very good. I know that you're spending some time volunteering this year. You've made a commitment to try and volunteer once a week. It sounds like that's going very well. I assume you're seeing some things that you never thought you'd see before. It's been fascinating, Joe. It's really been an interesting process. Uh, I've done a variety of things, everything from uh, helping pick up trash along the freeway uh, with the Department of Transportation and staff members. Uh, as well as an archaeological dig in Mahaska County. I've uh, vid visited some adult daycare programs, uh, delivered meals on wheels uh, at uh, a community meal site, um, and just a wide variety of uh, things that other people in Iowa are involved with on a daily basis as volunteers and it gives me an opportunity to see what other volunteers are doing throughout the state and also spotlight those efforts so that people in that community know um, know what's going on and know where their uh, volunteer hours could be used. I think it's terrific outreach from, from the governor's office, lieutenant governor's office in, in the communities and it's a terrific way to kind of get stay connected with with Iowans about the problems they see every day. Right, I think it helps educate me too about things that have to do with policies because you get a sense of uh, what the needs are out there and how those needs are being addressed by um, volunteer agencies. Oftentimes those agencies are also also receive state uh, or federal uh, dollars for their efforts as well and so uh, I get some first-hand experience with that. We've had a really wet spring and summer in Iowa, yes. a lot of flooding in northeast right. Iowa. I've mm -hmm. noted a number of occasions where you've traveled to, to see flooded areas. What's that been like? Well, uh, that's not one of the happy things that you get to do in this position, but uh, certainly one of the necessary things. Um, I was in Council Bluffs uh, just uh, last week uh, for the flooding there and then earlier in the summer and spring in northeast Iowa a couple of times on a couple of occasions um, for the flooding. Um, and it's an, it, it is a way that I can demonstrate on behalf of, uh, of the governor's office that we are interested and we're paying attention uh, when these kinds of disasters strike and, uh, and also to be able to um, request uh, a presidential disaster declaration which is very critical in order to get some funding in there uh, from the federal government to help, help out the individuals and the businesses that have been um, devastated by the floods. Flooding is really, I mean, I've been through some flooding as a county supervisor in 93 and seen the devastation. Flooding's about as bad as it gets in terms of this property destruction. It, it really is. It's so sudden and it's also so personal because um, things in your home that you've been keeping that are memorabilia or uh, souvenirs that can never be replaced uh, are oftentimes just simply destroyed. And um, so it's a very personal kind of disaster. So your schedule must just be busy, busy, busy. I suspect, I mean, I had the campaign and now you're serving and a lot of demands on your time. The volunteering, making space for that is a very large commitment. Um, how, do you, how do you manage all that with family and, and uh, work? Well, I have to say, I think I have an exceptional uh, husband and family. Uh, my husband has some flexibility with his job because he works out of our home. Uh, he's really taken on a major role of uh, being um, the uh, child care uh, provider at our, our house, and uh, that's made it uh, possible. So I, I really tip my hat to him for all the support that, that uh, he has given. Um, one of the reasons that I try to make uh, time for volunteer uh, effort, even in this busy schedule, is because I want to uh, point out to others that volunteerism is important. and. Um, you can make time for it no matter how busy your schedule is and I know there are a lot of people in Iowa who do that and uh, so um, it's a kind of a way in which I can highlight that as well. So what do you enjoy most about being Lieutenant Governor or a couple things? Well, are there things that stand out? I suppose there's good things and some things that oh I have to do this. Um, you know I like people very much I enjoy being with people uh, and so that's a great pleasure to travel the state and get to meet people and uh, visit with them and get their ideas about how uh, state government can do a better job in their lives so um, uh, I enjoy that very much um, sometimes I kind of meet myself coming and going you have a late night one night and a very early morning uh, the next and you're not always sure how to be prepared uh, for what you're going to do next but 
have a great staff at the office and, uh, and they help with that. As we approach the end of 1999 and moving into next year, what, what specific issues do you see facing your office and in, in, in the state for that matter? I know the workforce development is going to continue to be a focus. Are there other issues that you see yourselves focusing on? Well, we'll definitely stay focused on education. Uh, we feel that we really just started the process in the last legislative session to um, get $150 million over five years for reducing class sizes in Iowa, and we're going to continue to stay focused on, on education. Um, it, we're, we're also um, looking at uh, human, the S Department of Human Services and how we can do a better job of creating uh, flexibility for services there and um, streamline some of the, of the bureaucracy that, uh, that it, um, is burdensome to people when they're in need of services from the Department of Human Services. So that, that also will be a focus. And as you said, workforce. We need to um, focus on how we're going to uh, stop the brain drain here in Iowa. We need to really be sure that uh, we find ways to show um, young people who are graduating from our colleges and universities that there are a lot of opportunities here in Iowa uh, to put their um, education and skills and talents to use. So we're going to be trying to do a better job of, um, of filling those uh, workforce issues with, um, with Iowans. Good. I know the governor has, has spoken on numerous occasions, and I've heard you speak as well about that issue, about keeping young people in Iowa, bringing Iowans back home to Iowa. Um, the, the, birth rate is a, the birth rate compared to our aging population is certainly part of that. Um, we have a new state slogan, Fields of Opportunity, right. which kind of it, it talks about this, it seems to me. Uh, definitely. I think that was a great choice that the citizens of Iowa made, Fields of Opportunities, because uh, it has so many multiple uh, meanings. Obviously, there's the agricultural emphasis, but there's also uh, the many different um, fields uh, uh, in, um, uh, in employment that are available here in Iowa, and uh, we hope young people get a better idea of, of what some of those are. We need to be, we're very, we have to be competitive uh, for our young people. Um, other states do a better job of recruiting our young people than we do, and we need to get better at um, telling the story of why Iowa is a great place to live and, and all the, uh, the uh, wonderful job opportunities that are here, as well as the quality of life. I know the governor was in New York City and had just an overwhelming turnout of Iowans, probably to see him. I don't know how many people have moved back <laughs> since or planning to move back, but I thought that was an interesting uh, approach well, to this. That'll be a continuous uh, effort. We're um, staying in touch with those people who have graduated from uh, our Regents Universities and our uh, private colleges and um, inviting them constantly to, uh, to come back to Iowa. Uh, the governor did speak to a, a group of about 800 um, Iowa alumni in um, New York. A few weeks ago during RAGBRAI, um, I appeared at the surf ballroom in Clear Lake and uh, spoke to uh, a large number of um, out-of-state people who are participating in RAGBRAI and made the same kind of pitch. And, you know, we do occasionally get some of those. In fact, in my own hometown of Vinton, uh, there's a new business there called Frog Legs, um, which was started by uh, a couple of engineers, one of whom was a graduate of um, Iowa State University, the other was a Californian. They both were living in California. They came back to Iowa to uh, go on RAGBRAI, and uh, that year it had traveled through Vinton, and they decided that that was a great place for them to start their business, and, uh, and now they're operating um, a business out of Vinton, Iowa. There are probably hundreds of people <laughs> that are living in Iowa now that experienced Iowa for the first time or maybe second through Ray Bray. I think that's very, very possible and people fall in love with it. That was the one of the great things about my experience at the Surf Ballroom. Uh, as I met people and shook hands, they were telling me, these out-of-staters, what a wonderful state I had here. And uh, they didn't need to convince me, but it's great to hear, hear it from uh, people who live outside of Iowa. How, how wonderful they think our communities are. Great. We're down to the last couple minutes. What, any uh, closing thoughts on community involvement, which is a, I'm, something I'm interested in, I know you are, encouraging uh, civic involvement in our community is so important these days. Well, you know, Iowa uh, has more small communities than any other state in the union. And so 
there's there are multiple opportunities in iowa for people to become involved in their communities become involved in politics become involved as volunteers and i encourage people to do it it's the most rewarding most rewarding thing you can do and in fact there are studies now that show it'll cause you to live longer and be be healthier so that's multiple benefits very good. Lieutenant Governor Sally Pearson, thanks for being with us on Iowa News and Views this afternoon. Thank you, Senator Bolton. And uh, we'll, we'll be seeing you out and about. I see you in a number of places, and I'm always uh, impressed to, to be around you and, and hear, hear your, your views and ideas about the future of our state. And uh, here we are at the Iowa State Fair, the American uh, Republic Heritage Stage. I think I got it right. We're being powered by the Iowa Renewable Energy Association's uh, photovoltaic um, trailer, putting out about a thousand watts, enough to uh, power power this and, and much more. Uh, we appreciate you joining us. Uh, you've been watching Iowa News and Views. We'll see you next time. Thanks.